I think I just found myself my new favorite video game company. I'm so utterly, utterly wholeheartedly sorry. Greetings and salutations, my beautiful people. I don't care anymore. I don't. I, I mean, I mean, just, just, just look at this. Look, look at it. I mean, I mean, I mean, just look at it. I mean, for, for, I never thought in my entire life, in my whole career, anything that I would ever have to play, or witness, or see something. Just, you know, my life coming up to this watershed pinnacle moment of having to play and buy and play through and watch and play and buy something as abominable as this. I mean, Dalmatians 3? Where's Dalmatians 1 and 2? I mean, for fuck's sake, every so often you come across something and you just think, why? And this game is already easing onto number one of my top ten OH THE COMPLETE AND INDESCRIBABLE ANGUISH list. This game is a fucking enigma, you know, it just raises one too many unsettling questions. As you can see, it's obviously based off of Disney's 101 Dalmatians franchise, but it makes absolutely no sense. Is this the unofficial 101 Dalmatians 3, or the unofficial 102 Dalmatians 2, or is it the goddamn unofficial 103 Dalmatians 1? I mean, Disney in recent years have been known to make some unspeakable garbage, and luckily enough for their skinny little necks, Disney's name isn't anywhere on this. But then and that just raises even more questions. So then I decided to do some research into the company of whoever made this wretched piece of shit. And on my travels, I found some questionable things. The company is known as Phoenix Games, and good luck if you can find any scrappling of information on the entire internet about them. All that I managed to do was Google image the company, and then I found... <laughs> These. Who can forget those classic games on the PS2 next to Shadow of the Colossus and Sly Cooper 2, such as White Van Racer? No? Not ringing any bells? Okay, well how about Animal Soccer World? Hmm? Still nothing? Well how about Snow White and the Seven Clever Boys? <laughs> I have nothing to say. Do you even know what to say? Because I sure don't. Okay, well, maybe you know this one. It's an absolute classic street worry. Sweet Mother and Mary's a lizard god! I mean, after the shit that I've played on this channel, you guys probably think that Telegames were the worst possible company to make games on any home-based disc video game system. Well... I think that Phoenix Games takes that blood-soaked cake by a thousandfold, and it takes it to the deepest fathoms of hell and back again for eternal damnation on the surface amongst us consumer mortals that actually paid money for this maladorous tribe. Right off the bat, this game confuses me. I'm now in a... menu, I think? I'm not sure what the fuck I'm even looking at right now, but I assume it's a language selector, so I guess if I just hit select where I am right now, everything will just sort itself out. And this is where we discover that, unfortunately, this isn't really a game, so to speak, and more just a shitty collection of shitty minigames that don't even need to be made for a fucking PS2 disc. And these include a functioning painting game that gives us rather horrifying results, but it does look worse than Mario Paint, and for the PS2, that's fucking inexcusable. Mm. Then we have a puzzle game that has pieces that are exactly the same shape as one another, the solution is right there for you to copy blatantly, and every time you place a piece down, you hear the sound of Satan throwing up. And also, it's a little bit bloody disorientating because of the fact that there's a constant background image underneath the picture that you're trying to fucking solve. Mm. Then there's this game. I don't even have a clue. Mm. Then there's this card matching game. It's boring and pointless, trust me. Mm. And then finally, there's a... Oh, Lord, I fucking hate this. But the worst thing about this is, and I'm not even joking here, that these simple as shit minigames with no music and no animation and no graphics feel as though they need to spend up to a minute just loading. Yes! And for me, when it did decide to load a part of the disc, it actually nearly made my PS2 bloomin' explode. What's that? You don't believe me? Well, watch this then. Okay, there's the title sc uh, Oh. Good fucking god! We're not even- I'm not even joking, it's like- I know, I mean, we've- how long have we been sitting here? Every time it loads, every time it loads, and how- 
How many, how long, see, look how long it takes to load the language selector. And it's still making that noise. Come on, pick it. Look. I feel like it's going to set fire to the whole house. I'm so scared and... I, I, I just but, don't want to do it anymore. But, but ah. Uh, this is not the main event that we're going to be seeing tonight, for there is actually a bigger aspect to this game. One which is the dominant segment that consists of most of this disc here. And is this bit of the game worth any sort of remote little look? Well, grab some popcorn, sit back and find out. I'm serious. Grab some popcorn. I'm not joking, you're gonna need it. Begin. Where are you going, Lucy? Don't you want to play? I do, but I'm hungry. I'll be right back. Oh no! I mean, where do I even start with this? I have no idea. At all. Do you have an idea? Because I bloody don't. I mean, did you even fucking hear this voice acting? You get lost, Charlie, or something nasty will happen. Oh, stop it, Charlie. Can't you see that Lucy's not in a bad thing? Don't you want to check if it's really in its hole? Is there something not in order? Cry, baby. Cry, baby. Cry, baby. You sprinkled pepper on the cake. You, 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 you nasty tomcat, you. This is a new level of awful. I'm serious. How does no one ever even talk about this game when it comes to awful video game voice acting? I guess we'll never know that, but what I do think that you'd like to know is... Instead, the story. These are dogs, and this is a cat. The cat plays pranks on dogs, and then it runs away like this. <laughs> I'm not sure I can keep through with this. This game is going to be the death of me. And then all of a sudden, there's a narrator to the story in the form of a crow, I think. And it basically just sums up everything that I just explained. He belonged to Pino's, Sasha's, and Lucy's owner's neighbor. Okay, already, oh, I don't even give a shit. The plot has failed to engage me. And is it a girl? A guy? I see no dick or tits, and the voice is kind of indistinguishable, so I don't know. Owner's neighbor. The neighbor and the old lady who owned them. Wait! What? Am I going mad? Is it just me? Or was there, pray tell, a shot of a rabbit just then having a fucking seizure, making no noise for like a split second? I mean, what the hell is even going on? Well, plot-wise, as far as I can fathom at least, the cat's a bastard, the dogs are fed up, and so they want to play a trick on the cat to get re and the final straw that broke the camel's back with this was the day that the cat sprinkled pepper on a dog cake that he gave them. Cake. An A1 doggy cake. Um, excuse me, sir, those are not a singular whole cake, mm -hmm, no, they are, I think you'll find, in fact, actually, biscuits. I'm now starting to wonder if English was this company's native language because they really ain't convincing me right now. And is it just me, or does the cat sound like a strange cross between Willow the Wisp and X20 from Stingray? Well, that all depends. What do you want from me? Oh, there's a rare sight. It must be something very big. So anyway, the dogs concoct a plan and the prank goes ahead the next morning as they go off and tell the cat to look under a tree to catch a mouse. I smell something very fishy going on here. Jesus! You all right there, cat? Y your neck kind of stretched out a little bit. No? Yeah? You all right? You good? Okay. And as it turns out, very much like this scene that we just witnessed here, there are actually no sound effects and the voices are just not there. All throughout this. Some sounds just cease to exist. They're missing everywhere, I swear to God. have ever fucking passed testing. Did anyone seriously look at this and think, hey, you know what? This is perfect, perfect, perfect. The masses will absolutely love this. I'm sure they'd be willing to pay money to see this printed, printed now. But anyway, after this rolling, there's a new plot point introduced. The cat gets a gingerbread heart from his master and the dogs get a great idea. Our old lady has a birthday coming up. A heart like this would be great as a present for her. I also have a birthday coming up. Me too! Me too! I also have a birthday coming up! Me too! So do I! Me too! <laughs> However, since this is real life, the dogs actually need money for the gingerbread, which is kind of understandable, I suppose. But that's pretty funny in itself, because the box actually told me that we were getting cookies. Everything I 
So now the dogs want to swap this fucking junk over here in order to trade for some gingerbread. I'm sure this will go down just swell. And then they set off to town because dogs do that. And then we see some heavy metal pigs driving past. Before one of the dogs, fucked if I know its name, jumps up to grab some gingerbread. And then the humans happen. Stop! Stop! Hit that back immediately! The dogs then try explaining to the humans that they weren't stealing the gingerbread, which then lets us to discover that in this universe, these different species can communicate to each other because why not? But none of the humans actually care about what the talking dogs have to say, so the police... Okay, whisk the dogs away to be locked up. Are you bored yet? No? Okay then. The crow then chats up some more bullshit about everything we just saw and then... Okay, honestly guys, when I watched this travesty, by this point I just figured this was an overly long cutscene that would end very soon so that the proper game could begin. But no, I couldn't be any more wrong. It just kept going and going and going, getting gradually worse every goddamn second. I know none of the names of these animals. Random characters appear and vanish in and out of scenes at complete random. None of the audio is even remotely synced to what you're seeing. The voice acting sounds like it was performed by one fucking arsehole that didn't even know what a dictionary was, and the animation is... Well, there isn't any! When it comes to gaming, everybody says that the Zelda CDI games were the worst for animating and voice acting, but no. This word needs to be spread loud and clear. This is the ultimate of gaming lows, and I will have nobody tell me otherwise. And yes, okay, I can envision all of you at home right now thinking about typing, oh yes, but Kevin, you deliberately picked out a game that's clearly designed for children, so why are you even complaining? Yes, well, you know what? That's no excuse at all. There still needs to be some sort of quality control with these things. I mean, yes, kids may be very easy to entertain, but they are not stupid, and this is just insulting. There are some awesome kids games out there, especially some of the PS1 Disney games and even all the stuff from Humongous Entertainment, but for a company to slap together loads of shitty mini games with no music that could easily be done at home without any fucking electricity, and then add in the worst cartoon anyone has ever laid eyes on, and then slap on Disney characters on the box to trick parents into buying it makes me think that this company is actually hell incarnate into a game company. And as for this cartoon, take a guess how long it goes on for. Go on, take a guess. I'll wait. Oh, come on, keep on guessing. I'm sure you can- 45 minutes! 45! And it just gets worse and worse. Just like leaving cheese on the kitchen side for a few days. You just don't do it, you know? Because it stinks. And all in all, this entire package as a whole literally makes me shiver with fear. So anyway, we get some more bullshit with 1994 laptop computers before heading briskly off to the pound to save those idiots from earlier. And this is when we meet the main antagonist, some random guard dog. Ah, two new ones. Oh, well, welcome to the dog pound, Castor and Pollux. Oh, God, no! And so, this dog... Two dogs? What? Introduce us to our new doggy friends in the pound. <laughs> what the fuck? But then it turns out that we actually recognise these dogs and then... <laughs> okay... Unfortunately though, nothing interesting at all happens in this bit, however. Well, you know, apart from more of the horrendous voices. I was also there. I had, uh... Yeah. That's the way it was. And also, there's a random sheepdog here that never appears in the story ever again. He just sits there for one scene and he's, he's kind of creeping me out. Hey up, I think I should have had those naughty special candies at the disco. Draw me like one of your French girls. And it also seems like that those idiot dogs that got caught earlier are now undergoing slave labor? I, I mean... Lick and stick. Lick and stick. Lick and stick. Lick and stick. Lick. And stick? Lick. What about stick? Lick. Yes, but you're forgetting stick. Lick and stick. And I just gave up. And then the crow returns again to explain even more shit. Grimmel and Tumpleton would have to hurry if they wanted to help those two. Are you finished? <laughs> And this is where I officially lost all fucking caring. I realised it wasn't going to end anytime soon. It's one of those rare instances in a game where the novelty of how awful everything is actually gets really tiresome and unfunny pretty shortly. I mean, how is this even made with a PS2 disc? Just, 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 just imagine how much free space there was on that disc when this was finished. Not only are the mini games that make up every bit of the gameplay completely worthless even for mid-90s gaming standards, but look at the movie itself. It actually looks worse than pre-PS1 FMV from systems like the Sega CD. It just blows my mind. All I wanted was for this to just end, but instead I was stuck in here with all these stupid dogs that always talk about how they like to throttle that Pollux. I'm sorry, 
Excuse me? Throttle that Pollux! Could you please say that again? Throttle that Pollux! You, you, you better watch your mouth, young man. This is a kid's game. It better look like it was licked clean. Your mother was very good at that. Okay, that about wraps it up. Thanks very much for watching, guys, and I'll see you all next time. Hey, fine! Keep fucking going! So our titular character gets oh so close to rescuing some of the idiot dogs when all of a sudden... What the actual hell is even going on right now?! And then, after some more series of nonsensical and unexplained events, the crow needs to steal a code for the security system installed in the pound. And that's supposed to be a secret code. It's just a simple mathematics. Yes, you're right. Of course. The code is just a simple mathematics. How could someone actually allow this to be sold on the shelves? And before anybody asks, yes, this is a Sony licensed product, and may I remind you as well, it was made for the PlayStation 2. Look at this, it was made for the PS2 in 2003. They allowed this to go through. Money went into this. Look at it! And you know what? The box lied to me yet again. Where's this bitch? Well, this bitch. Or this dog over here? Well, guess what? All of these characters on the front of the fucking box never appear. Ever. Anywhere on this disc. Why would you go through the effort of ripping off Disney-specific characters from Disney-specific movies and then somehow materialize a confusing fucking title that tries to tie itself into the franchise, but instead makes no sense anywhere in any universe and then actually never have the game even vaguely relate to the cover? I don't understand. I waited in vain for these fucking boxed characters to show up, and after the worst 45 minutes I've ever had to sit through, nothing. And saying that as well, Dalmatians 3? Why is it even called this? Where are the Dalmatians? There are three of them in the whole game! Three! How did they think that they could get away with this? Dalmatians 3? They should have called it Three Dalmatians! Although I can safely say that the cartoon does have some epic chase scene music. And trust me, it becomes even more epic when you have this lovely image pushed into your face. <laughs> okay. Guys, before I carry on, I have to apologise. I must apologise. Because for the next 20 odd fucking minutes of this shit, it's exactly the same stuff. I can comment on absolutely nothing else. It's all the same shit. This game has officially sucked me dry. And so, after much deliberation, I decided that from this bit onwards, I was just going to play back to back all of my favorite quotes from this awful travesty piece of shit of a video game, just so that you get a better idea on how hilariously awful it is. Yep, yeah, I know, they'll be out of context, but even when they're in context, they make equal fucking sense. So you know what, I don't even care. Sit back, please, and enjoy. <laughs> At the market? Tupfelchen, oh Tupfelchen. Oh, I think she's in trouble. I'm sure she went to find Toby and Timmy. Well, well, you would you believe it? That was pretty fast. Where are Butch and Tupfelchen? Once I decided to get involved, I was consistent. But he, but, but, but he, he disappeared weeks ago. Exactly. <laughs> I, don't, I don't want to hear every word. Sleep. I know. I think I know something. Leave them alone, Pollux. What's this screaming about? What's going on here? Oh, oh, we'll come up with something. <laughs> I just have. Yeah, I've just thought of something. They aren't burglars. Let them go immediately or else. Oh, goody, 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 goody. Oh, I needed to take a pee, and I didn't quite make it to the courtyard. That policeman, oh, he will be as mad as hell. Oh, boy, that was close. And do you want to know the ending line to this kid's cartoon? The closing sentence to this epic 45-minute movie? The final words spoken by these utterly beloved characters? Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you... The contents of a liver sausage will always be a mystery. Huh? This game gets slaughtered. I mean, Jesus Christ on a bicycle. I could never even have imagined how bad this game would be. I mean, at the time, Coronation Street and the Mystery of the Missing Hot Pot Recipe was indeed the worst game I've ever played in my life. But that down there, it's not even in the same fucking ballpark. This is the worst thing I've ever, 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 ever even seen, let alone played. But honestly, to critique this as a game, it means that I actually have to talk about the 
gameplay segments, and where all the mini-game sections of this game are just... terrible, the cartoon segment of this disc is just so bad, so atrocious, so fucking abysmal, that it's just great. For all of you sadists out there that can sit through 45 minutes of one of the worst cartoons you've ever seen in your life and enjoy it with a couple of friends, it's right up your street. I would recommend this to hell and back. Seriously guys, search this game up on YouTube or buy it for yourself. It'll be really cheap in some sort of dumpster somewhere and you will not regret any second of it. Please trust me. And so, to sum up, this game is worse than Zelda CDI and Birdemic. Oh, and after one playthrough of this game, the disc got so hot that it wouldn't actually load again afterwards. At all. <laughs> yeah, this is like that creepypasta about that fake game, Kill Switch. You know, the one that once you've beaten it once, it just erases all traces of itself so that you can never play it again, and that no one ever knows it even existed. Yeah, that's this game, but in real life. I've got nothing else to say. Fuck this game. <laughs> Hello everybody and thanks very much for watching this video. I mean seriously, it was a long one so fair play to you if you sat through all of it. But you know, I think you can see why it was so long. This was a real task, I can tell you. If you want to keep up to date with what I do and things that I say, you can always follow me on Facebook and Twitter. And don't forget to subscribe to see every single thing that I upload ever. I try to keep consistent to one video per week. And if you did enjoy this video, then please don't forget to leave a little like for me because it will mean so much to me. I've also left you with two other of my videos, one of which is about The Great Escape, which was my last review, which is, I think you should go and watch. It. And the other one is not really a review and a really unedited, pretty quickly put together uh, mini review on The Last of Us Left Behind. So yeah, you've got two things to pick from. Completely different styles of video, completely different experiences. So yeah, go and have a go. 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 And if it's your birthday today watching this video, then happy freaking birthday to you and please remember to stay beautiful.